Hello, everybody. My name is Don Self. And I, for the last 35 years, I've been telling doctors how to make money and stay out of trouble. I'm a reimbursement consultant. Right now, I want to talk to you about remote physiologic monitoring and how it uh, makes a huge difference with patient care. And it also reduces health care costs, which is why Medicare likes it. And then at the same time, it can help you greatly increase your clinic income. Medicare started covering this January 1st of last year, which is whenever we opened up Telecare USA, because doctors needed a place to go to. So we got it all started up and running. Let's talk about it. Doctors have been years, for years, have been trying to rely on the patient honesty. And sometimes they doubt about the patient's honesty a little bit about the reports that they bring in on home glucose, on blood pressure monitoring, and even the scales and the weights. I mean, how many times have doctors heard the expression, well, at home, my blood pressure was normal. And here, it's always high, and it must be because of you, doctor, which is why they came out with a white coat syndrome. Many patients have some, many patients will wait until about a week or so before their appointment, before they start keeping up with their numbers. And I know about that right there. Some patients are gonna lie to you about it and fabricate the numbers like Gregory House always said on his TV show. And then some patients don't even test at different times of the day. They'll test every night or they'll test in the morning. But there is an importance to doing separate times of the day. As I found out with my own cardiologist, whenever she changed up my medication. So CMS and Medicare, they recognize that monitoring is helping patients. So they got kind of excited about all this right here. And that's why they've been doing this for about four years, in fact, and there's different studies that Medicare and CMS has had. In fact, here's results of one of those studies, the KLAS study that they did with the telemonitoring. And they found that there was a 38% a reporting of 38% reduction on hospital admissions and 25% re reported reduced readmissions. Well, that's kind of important to Medicare and all the carriers because they're paying so much money on readmissions and initial admits. In fact, according to one study I saw, back in 2017, a hospital stay averaged out at $15,700. Well, Medicare would much rather pay a doctor $118 a month than having to pay for just one hospital study. Because in a year's time, they've saved a whole lot of money. And especially whenever you stop and think about the ER visits too. Because they, there was a 25% reduction on emergency room visits they reported. Well, at the same time, Medicare spends about $1,900 for every ER visit or emergency department visit. And I know that gets to be very expensive. I know I had to take my mother-in-law a bunch of times before she passed. And it's quite expensive up there. They've had improved medication compliance, patient health, and decreased A1C levels. And this has gotten Medicare's attention and hopefully soon the commercial insurance carrier's attention too. Now doctors, you have a choice, or the clinics, you have a choice. You can use Telecare USA, where you're getting the blood pressure or the glucose or the O2 or even the, the scales for the CHF patients. And we'll provide those to you. Doc, doctor, you tell the patient that you want them to get whatever monitor and the nurse or the MA will show the patient how to hook it up. And it's really easy. I mean, I'll show you my own monitor right here. What I use every day, I basically take the monitor and I stick my arm inside the machine, just like that, and I push the button. After it finishes, it transmits the data over to my cell phone, which then transmits electronically without me having to do anything into the portal where my doctor staff can monitor it. It's really that simple. And so recommend that the patients take two readings a day, whether or not we're talking about glucose or we're talking about blood pressure or scales or whatever, the O2 sats for your COPD patients. And doctors, then you're gonna make between 50 to $70 average net per patient per month. And that's a whole lot more than you're making on the $41 a month that you're getting on on a care management or the 30 something dollars you're getting on the uh, personal care management. So a whole lot less work and less trouble too. Now yeah, doctor, you can go out and buy your own monitor and spend $50,000, $90,000 on the system and recreate the wheel by making your own portal on HIPAA and stuff that the set data comes into that your staff checks, but why do that? You're also assuming responsibility for the loss. 
So what you may want to do is say, okay, I'm going to give you guys a try and try about 10 of your monitors, see how well that's working. And once I get up to 500 monitors or so, then, then I'll go out and invest my money in my own monitors or something. That's what some doctors have wanted to do. What kind of monitors we're talking about? Well, blood pressure, the glucose, O2 sats, and scales. Uh, scales for the CHF patients, because something about the water weight, doctors like to check, and COPD patients having their O2 checked, and the glucose for our diabetics. Now, these aren't just the kind of monitors you get over the counter at uh, CVS or Walmart and them, because they don't meet the guidelines in order to bill it out for the 99454. And that's one of the guidelines is you're required to provide all the monitors to the patients. And the other one is CPT codes. We've got brand new CPT codes last year, January of last year, 2019, that we had three codes added, 99453. Nine, uh, nine, nine, and that's for showing the patient how to do their own monitoring. Sending it home with the patient is code 99454. Nine, and that's you providing and provision of the right kinds of monitors. They've got to be able to do some kind of emergency alert so that if the patient's numbers come back 200 over 140, it automatically sends something to the nurse or the doctor letting them know, hey, you got a patient in trouble. Or if the numbers are running 70 over 40 or something, it automatically does that for you. That's how we have these set up with our system. But you can make it different for each, each doctor you want, have their own guidelines. And then you got 99457, that's for your staff spending 20 calendar minutes a month. And that's a calendar month. Where the 99454 is each 30 days. And that's a time code. So in order to bill it, you have to have 15 of those 30 days. And 99458 is a brand new code that came out with in January of 2020 that allows you to get additional money for each additional 20, calendar, 20 minutes in a calendar month. So if you look on a typical month, you, most of your patients are going to be one charge of 99454 and one charge of 99457. That's 117 or almost $118 average in the country. Now, if you're in Alaska, it's probably going to be about 130 something. Or California, 125, 130 bucks. I don't know. If you're in Mississippi, it might be down to 109. I don't know because it costs different. And I'm just showing you the averages for the country. Now, some patients might get 40 minutes, so you get not only the 5.4 and the 5.7 code, but you get one charge of the 5.8 code because you've gone over 39 minutes, so you're at 40 minutes or more. So that would be $43 for that one, so that's a total of $161. That's kind of profitable right there. Now, in a typical patient, though, just getting the 20 minutes uh, reading is going to give you about $71 a month per patient. And that's per month. And again, like as I said before, it's much more profitable than chronic care management or personal care management. And the, we have a different cost factor for the blood pressure monitor scales and the O2 sats because you don't have to provide additional stuff to those patients. Where if you're doing glucose monitoring for the diabetic patient, you're required, doctor, in order to build these out, you're required to provide the uh, the strips and the lancets and the lancet device to the patient for them to be able to use. So that means your cost factor is a little bit higher because we have to provide those to you. So on those, your cost factor is $58 a month. That means you're netting around $59 or $60 per month per patient. That's still not bad. And that's, again, if your staff only spent 20 calendar minutes per month. So if you have 100 patients, out there that's getting that glucose monitoring or if, uh, hypertension monitoring, O2 SATs, any of those. Well, you have a different, again, you have a different profit level. Your profit margin is about $7,000 a month if they're using hypertension or O2 or COPD equipment. Now, if they're doing diabetics because you're having to provide the strips and the lancets, you're making $5,900 a month. Every one of my clients in the country has started off with their hypertension patients. Well, I take that back. One of my clients started with hypertension and diabetic. They got five hypertension uh, blood pressure monitors and five glucose monitors. So that's, so you kind of get an idea. And that's again, based on 20 minutes a month. And what kind of reporting we're we looking at? One of the things that's really cool about it is our system will show you how many minutes your staff has spent in logging in and doing the management on the patients per month. 
Some patients may be 21 minutes. Some patients may be 72 minutes. It depends because sometimes your ha your staff's having to call the patient on the phone and explain, ask them why they're not testing or so. So it's going to vary. So like on this very first one where it's 51 minutes, how would you bill that out? The system automatically shows you you're going to bill out for that one at about $161 because you're going to have one charge of providing the monitors to the patient, one charge of the initial 20 minutes, and then one charge of the additional 20 minutes. So that's not bad profit margin, $114 for your staff spending 40 minutes that month. And the next one right here shows that it's 72 minutes on that patient. And by the way, I blanked out the patient's Medicare numbers and IDs and their last names and their patient IDs in the system. So that way we're staying HIPAA compliant. Like this patient was 72 minutes, went over 60. So that's one charge of providing the equipment, one for the initial 20 and two charges and then then four, five, eight. So that particular patient, you ended up netting about $157. That's not bad, and especially when you stop to consider how many diabetics or how many hypertensive or CHF or O2, uh, you know, COPD patients you might have. Now, what, what kind of report do you get each month? This is something that got my cardiologist kind of excited about, about when I took my report in and gave it to her. Because she said, hey, Don, your numbers at night are a whole lot higher than they are in the morning, so what I want you to do is I want you to cut your pills in half. Or well, this patient right here is just the opposite. Their numbers in the mornings are a lot higher than they are at night. And so the doctor may want to titrate or may want to split up the meds a different way by having different, different types of averages. And I love the way it shows averages by the times of days here. I think that's kind of cool and clients like it too. Now, here's a report of a patient who on February 1st had a blood pressure of 182 over 119. That's a little high, it's not outrageously scary, I guess, but a little bit high. Well, the nurse saw this right here and called in the patient about nine in the morning and had the patient do another test after finding out, well, earlier when that patient had done it, the patient had been on the phone with the son and got upset. And now then the numbers come in a little bit better, 134 over 83, which is still a little bit higher than you'd like, but patient admitted they had been taking their pills and then the nurse automatically you know, adds in the data right here that I spent 13 minutes overall with the patient. So that way it keeps track of it for the nurse. Uh, your staff can easily see a, a gap in the testing. By looking at this one right here on a patient, they had tested on 2-12 sometime in the morning. They didn't test again until the 16th in the morning. So no test was taken in three days. Well, that means that the staff can call the patient on the phone and talk to them. And remember, all the time on the phone counts just like the time that they use on monitoring whenever they're logging in and doing management on this patient. So it doesn't take much to get 20 minutes in a month for your staff. And that staff doesn't have to be an MA or an LVN or an RN. It can be any employee that you train. These are my guidelines I'm looking for. If the numbers are this, I want to be told. If the numbers are this, it's normal. Just log it in. Now, can patients use their own devices? Well, if the provider wants to bill for the code 99454 and 57, you got to be using the provider, the equipment you're providing, because the equipment they get at the store doesn't do what the equipment we need it to do. Can telecare do this on a percentage of what the doctor is paid? No, I will not do that. That's illegal. And yeah, I know that some people out there telling you, oh, I, we checked our attorneys, and our attorney said we can do this on a percentage basis. Keep in mind, their attorneys can say anything, but their attorney's job is to protect them, their client, not you. Five years from now, if you get audited and you've got some kind of a percentage deal going with anybody, whether it's this or ultrasound or anything else, whenever you're the one having to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars back to Medicare because you're in violation of start and fee splitting laws in your state, that person who sold it to you is probably no longer in the business because a lot of most people in this business, they normally last two or three years and they're off to something else. I've been doing this 35 years and I've seen that happen a lot. Does the management have to be performed in the clinic? No, per the last November, uh, last November's federal register, Medicare came out and said that this right here can be done under in general supervision incident two, which means that it can be done by somebody in the patient's, uh, in their home. So you can grab an employee 
and work out of their home. So if you have a 19 year old going to college and you're wanting them to do some work for you for a couple of hours a day or an hour a day, log in, check the numbers, put it into the system, and then next and go back to school and then why not do the same thing? That's okay. Uh, because it doesn't have to be somebody in the clinic now by Medicare. What if patients lose or break the monitor? Well, if you own the equipment, you're doing this on your own, you're out of luck. <laughs> now, if I own the equipment, then I've got an insurance policy on it, so you only pay a $50 replacement fee for it. Uh, by the way, in the last 13 months we've been doing this, I've only lost one monitor. I had one doctor's wife call me up and uh, said, uh, Don, you know the monitor we had? One of the monitors we had uh, just got blown away by a tornado yesterday here in Winsboro. And I said, yeah, I read about that, that tornado. My sister lives up there. And she said, yeah, but it, uh, the monitor's gone. She said, send me another monitor and I'll pay the 50 bucks replacement. I said, thank you much. And we'll do so. And we did. So they're, they're, we take care of it that way. You don't have to start with 200 monitors or anything like that. You might say, hey, I want to start with 10 monitors at 46, 25 a month, and we send you 10 monitors and you've got them on your shelf right there. And as the patients come in, you're sitting there saying, here we go. I've got a monitor for you. Whether or not it's the glucose or whether or not it's the blood pressure monitor or the SAT or the scales, whatever it may be. Cardiology clients, we find they're normally starting with 20 to 40, but then they have a lot more hypertensive patients than most of our family physicians and internal medicine docs do. No, I can't wait to bill you until you hand them to the patient because they may sit on your shelf because I know doctors, they get new toys and they play with it at first and then they kind of forget about them. Um, now then you have an incentive to get it off the shelf and onto the patient to help the patients and make you money. So I can't, because I'm also paying for the monitoring whether it's sitting on your shelf or whether or not it's in the hands of a patient. I'm still paying for that, so I cannot wait and bill you later. Uh, there's no long-term contract. You say, okay, we want 10 monitors and you take 10 and then you say, hey, I want to call up and, hey, send us another 10. Well, those 10 were on the, with the patients. Good. We send you 10 more and then you might say, hey, I'm getting to the point where I want to go out and buy my own monitors. So we're going to send you all yours back. That's fine. Uh, you're not locked into this right here in any kind of time frame. As soon as you send the monitor back, we stop, you know, we stop billing you. What carriers are paying for? Right now, Medicare is. All Medicare carriers, Part B and Part C are. We haven't had any trouble from any Medicare carriers because if my clients had, they'd tell us. And if you start, if you find out if any commercial carriers in your area is paying for it, let us know. I know that some are in Florida and New and Illinois, I've been told, and also in California. So let me know what you find. What's the Texas Medicaid study? You might have read about this right here in my newsletter or something or in one of the articles I've written. Several years back, starting in 2016, CMS entered into an agreement with Medicaid in Texas for Medicare, Medicaid, CQMB crossover patients that they would cover the monitor. So the doctor doesn't have to pay anything for the monitor as long as the patient qualifies in the Medicaid program. And we help you find out which of your patients qualified. I don't know of any other state that's doing this kind of a study right here. But I do know that Texas Medicaid is paying about $228 a month to the doctors on this. And the doctors we've got enrolled in this really love it. Uh, so, and we're signing up docs all the time on it. So if you're in Texas, ask me about this. And see, let's see if you qualify. And what's the next step? It's real easy. You call me up on the phone or send me an email saying, hey, Don, uh, well, you really need to talk to you on the phone. And I have some questions for you to find out whether or not this can fit you well. And then I'll send you the rental agreement and the BAA from HIPAA. And that's all it takes. And you tell us how many you want to start with. Do you want to start with 10 or 20 or whatever? And we get you started. It's really that easy. Uh, Medicare patients really are as profitable as I say they are, because they're about five times as more profitable than commercial insurances. And I know there's folks at your state association or your national association that told you otherwise, but they got their head up the butt because they don't know what they're talking about. If you're in primary care, you're going to make between $1,400, $1,700 a year on most Medicare patients. And most commercial insurance patients, like I'm 63, you might make two or $300 a year on me about all, is all. Because I don't have all these diagnoses that Medicare patients do. And uh, commercial carriers don't pay for everything that Medicare does. So if you ever want to, I'll spend an hour on the phone with you and your doctor and your manager. 
And at the end of that hour, I'm going to ask you a simple question because I'm going to make suggestions throughout the hour and asking questions, what you're doing, what you're not doing. And if you say yes, at the end of the hour, I just helped you increase your income by $20,000 a year, then great, you can pay me my fee, my, my consulting fee for that hour. And if not, you don't owe me. Nine out of 10 doctors end up paying me because I end up making them an extra 70 to 120,000 a year just in that one hour. And that's not even counting remote, uh, remote uh, physiologic monitoring. <laughs> that's even without this. So here's my contact information. And if you want to, you can also visit my website, donself.com and take some of the free webinars that's on there. And some of them even include the CEU I've already paid for. So if you have any questions, reach out and let us know. We're here to help you. Thank you much.